If every day more more help is coming in, this is this is the first step. And then a permanent one, this is something that needs to be built together. And it can only be built together if both parties understand that uh, the solution to this conflict is never going to be violence. The solution to this conflict is that people sit around the table. Um, I think everyone on both sides has a huge responsibility for that. And political leaders needs to need to step beyond their own shadow and take decisions which are not easy but necessary decisions to go into peace talks. From the Belgian television RTL, I have a question maybe a bit more personal. You have spent two days in the region. Uh, what would you keep in mind, and I would say in your heart, um, as you are going back to Europe? Um, I think first of all a lot of hope. If I see so many people here, hundreds of people here who are volunteers, and who want to uh, want to help people who are in need, we can only be extremely uh, extremely hopeful. But being hopeful is not enough. Now a ceasefire, it's up to us to make it work. And that's the message that we uh, that we uh, that we bring here. Last message is um, there has been too much human suffering, and stopping human suffering should be our number one priority. Stop the fighting, release the hostages, and get the help in. That's the first step, and that's the message that we bring here. And I hope that uh, somewhere in the next hours we can bring it in practice. To me, I would say two images. The first one is a young boy of 18, 19 years old that we met in the kibbutz that we uh, that we visited yesterday in Israel. Uh, uh, which suffered, of course, these uh, terrorist attacks uh, from Hamas, and he was uh, willing to. He came back and he was telling us that he he was he was ready to to rebuild his home and to uh, to live where he uh, where he belongs. And uh, the second one is perhaps all these images of uh, a long file of trucks waiting to open these gates and to uh, allow the humanitarian aid to enter into Gaza. But at the end of the day, as Prime Minister De Croix said, hope. And this is what we will work, I'm sure, with dear friend, for that hope uh, for the region, the people in Palestine and the people in Israel. Thank you very much. Thank you. What's the very latest? Well, Jonathan, we are still waiting for official confirmation that the 13 Israeli hostages have, in fact, been released and crossed the border into Egypt. Um, an Israeli official says when that happens, there's very specific process that they will go through. They will be greeted by uh, specialized soldiers within the Israeli military. They will receive health checks. There will be an identification process. And then once that happens, they will be provided with with a video link to their families for the first time in some 48 days able to speak to their family members with the help of psychologists and social workers and then from there uh, they will be driven to um, an Israeli air base and flown to five separate hospitals in Israel that is certainly the plan we are waiting for official confirmation as is the entire region to see if that is an, is actually what happens we're also waiting of course for the identities of the hostages uh, expected to be released today. Sharon, are we anticipating hearing from Prime Minister Netanyahu at all today? Give us the, the sense as to what he and his government uh, are saying. Well, we're, as I said, John
Jonathan, we're waiting for an official word. We know that the Israeli Prime Minister is with his defense minister as well as others, carefully monitoring the situation across each and every development along the way. Uh, the Red Cross seen as a critical partner in all of this, a neutral party is likely feeding the Israelis information as well as uh, the Palestinians. It is thought, presumably, once this is said and done, that we should hear from the Israeli Prime Minister, but nothing definitive from the Prime Minister's offices yet. Aaron, stay with us. So, David, um, give us 